All right, let's talk about making the workspace work for you. All right, you might be tempted to start out by just hitting new workspace, but you don't need to do that. What you need to do is find a workspace that you want to modify. And I'm sort of a minimalist type dude, so I'm going to roll with essentials. Okay, the first thing you need to decide is whether you want this control panel at the top or at the bottom. A lot of people skip this step, including myself, but you can find a lot of use in keeping it at the bottom, especially if you have a monitor that's tilted away from you. Having it at the bottom lets you see it a little bit better and it can improve your productivity. But I'm just going to leave it at the top for now. The next thing I want to talk about is using tab. And while this isn't specifically setting up your workspace, it's vital for using your workspace productively. So if you hit tab, you hide all the panels. And if you hit shift tab, you just hide these panels, you keep the tools panels. Now, if I hit shift, wait, hold on. All right, if, I, if I'm starting with no tabs and then I hit shift tab, the opposite happens. So you get these panels over here and your control panel and tools panels are hidden. So I'm just gonna go back to normal. Now, by default, most of the workspaces that Adobe provides has docked panels. I'm gonna argue against that because it's really a waste of space. So by dragging out the panels and having them free floating, as long as you don't change the size of the whole uh, application itself, then you shouldn't have any issue. But if you do change, like if I move this over here, you'll notice that it stays put. So that's one thing to be aware of. But let's drag these out so we have a little bit more space to work with. The next thing you want to think about is whether or not you want docked open panels. Now, I am a typographer by trade. So I like the type windows, at least character, paragraph, and actually I don't really use open type, but at least character and paragraph to be open for me. So I'm going to drag that out. So let's say I want to keep these open and I want to keep them big just for the sake of argument. You can keep these over here. You can also dock them over here. You can also dock your tools panel over here. So if you want to keep open panels, think about what you want to see. Some good candidates are things like Navigator, which shows you where you're at. Things like Color Picker and Swatches, which will, sh there we go, which will allow you to pick things like that quickly and easily automatically change the color that you're working with sorry that's pink's gonna bug me alright so I'm just gonna collapse those down just so I have some room the next thing you want to think about is do you want any freeform panels floating over here now I like to have layers and I also like to have the transform options open so I can use them easily. And again, these will not move around when you, actually, I want to keep those in there all in one. These will not move when you resize the whole application. But um, if you're keeping in one size, you should be fine. And they will disappear whenever you hit tab. Okay, the final thing with panels that you want to think about is do you want to show the options? And a lot of times you do. And it's a good idea to have show options clicked just so um, whenever you open up the whatever it is, you don't have to click it every time. So this is sort of how I like to roll. Uh, one last thing for panels is decide if you want two or one over here with the tools panel. I'm sure it's so basic you've probably already done it. But 
just make sure that you do that. All right, now with the document info, this is a uh, often neglected part of Illustrator that can really save you some looking around. So you can do current tool, date and time, number of undos. Now, except for number of undos, a lot of this information is already available, but it makes it quick so you can just see exactly what's happening with your document. Okay, so once you have the, shoot, I really didn't want to do that. Oh, well, once you have the document that you want set up, I'll just put image trace right there. Then you go to new workspace and you'll give a name to the workspace that you want. So the next time you're in Illustrator, it will give you the ability to click on the workspace. This workspace fresh is the one I actually use for my designs. So you'll see I have appearance by itself up at the top, typography, uh, things with brushes, colors, painting, more colors, border, gradient, and transparency, and graphic styles, which I really don't use. So I'm just going to delete that. <clears throat> okay, so that is pretty much all that you need to know as far as making the workspace work for you. In the next section, we'll talk about getting a template. And when you combine a template with a workspace, you'll start to see that now we're getting the productivity that was promised to you with this amazing, incredible course on Adobe Illustrator, the most wonderful program on the planet Earth. <laughs>